Amen. Amen. We want to thank Sister Julia for that presentation. And at this time, we are going to invite Brother Trevor to come up, give us our afternoon presentation, and we will continue to be blessed. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Sister Danita, and thank you, Sister Julia. And um, I want to mention before we start that the things that Sister Danita talked about are basic things that we have to know. When you were in school, you were taught things that you really don't need to know but are helpful, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and so on. How many times do you think about that during the day? A lot of times, probably not at all. Uh, even history, a lot of things you were taught in school history and so on, you're not used, you, you don't use them at all. You weren't taught anything about uh, saturated fats, monounsaturated fats, and uh, polyunsaturated fats, and you weren't taught anything about the uh, uh, the proper proportions and amounts and so on. And you don't know by and large anything, brethren, and it's not your fault for not being taught, but it is your fault for not knowing now because it is necessary for you to know. And you say, well, that's kind of technical, scientific. No, it isn't. It's basic everyday knowledge that a health reformer, uh, a reformer Davidian needs to know. You do need to know these things. It's not all that complicated. It's a, it's a small body of information, and you can easily uh, put your mind to understand it, learn it, but you weren't taught it in school, and most people, once they leave school, they leave their education behind. As we talked about before, people are not learning. And uh, my talking to you about this is not going to influence most of you to go out and learn about these things, but the Davidians who hear of what I say will do this. You do need to do this if you're a Davidian. You do need to know these basic health reform things. Uh, we are instructed by the spirit of prophecy that we have to know these things, and we will uh, itemize these things from time to time in the future, what we have to know but you should know about the composition of your food. If you don't know, you're just eating blindly, you don't know anything about the food that you're eating, what is that? Is that health reform? It is not health reform, brethren. You do need to know, and you say, well, that's boring, I'm not interested, and so on. But the Lord didn't ask us if we were interested in things. He has told us what we need to know, and the Spirit of Prophecy does say we need to be knowledgeable about these things. We do need to know this. Um, it is uh, way, way past the time for us as a people to know this basic uh, health reform information. How many calories is there in that plate of food you are about to eat? I don't know and probably don't care, but you do need to know and you do need to care. How much protein is there in that uh, food that you ate for the day? It's very important, just as important as knowing about the fats in your diet. And you say, I don't really care about that, I just eat. Well, to be a Davidian means much more than just coasting through life on the level of the everyday person. You're there to know how to take care of your health and to help other people, to teach other people. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it, but then you're not going to be a Davidian indeed. You'll be a hanger along, a drifter along, and a, a, a fellow traveler and so on, but you're not going to be truly a Davidian. The standards are different. The standards are not the same as what you came in on. It's not bait and switch. It was always high, but we didn't pay attention to that. But this is the standard, brethren. Know these things. They're not that hard for you to learn. Uh, a little bit of application of your mind, a few days, uh, you will understand these things and you will know 
how many uh, calories uh, uh, there are in a potato, uh, what is the best kind of fats, what, what fats do you need, how much do you need, and so on. You do need to know these things and you need to be able to uh, identify whatever you're eating, you need to know. And, and when you don't know, look it up. It just takes a moment. Looking up is quick, remembering it will take a little bit more time, but it is a requirement. We do have to be learning, growing uh, constantly. It means much, much more than you thought. Uh, no one is exempt. No one is exempt from the standards. And the more you try, even when it's harder, even when you're older, the more you try, the better you'll get at remembering these things. The more your brain will um, remember. So remember, uh, uh, we have to keep this in mind. It is necessary for us to be learning constantly, growing constantly, if we're going to be part of God's army, if we're going to be the people that God has called us to be. And that's our title, How Are You Preparing to Be Part of God's Army? It's not so much talk anymore as it is um, doing. And a lot of people came in on talk and theory, and they missed the talk and theory. Sorry, uh, but uh, you need to either come with the program or separate yourself into a, 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 a class where you're more comfortable and, uh, and just m maybe go over the chart studies every week privately. Uh, it's not going to save you. It's not even going to help you because that's not what you need right now. You don't need theory, you need action. You need change in your life, you need growth. That's what we need to be part of the people that the Lord is calling us to be. It is, uh, uh, if we were the people we were to be right now, the work would be uh, growing explosively. Every single one of us would be a gospel worker moving forward effectively. We have people who, um, who try, but their efforts actually move backward. There are people who every time they think that they're doing something good in the church, actually causing a tr problem and uh, uh, causing um, uh, disfavor for the message. They, every single time. And they, regardless of how many times we talk about it, these people continue on. Now, this should not be, we should not be dragging the wagon backward. We should be moving forward. All of us, the whole, whole body of Davidians. And the reason that we are not is because we are not the people that we are supposed to be. We, we're just too lackadaisical, indolent, not really um, uh, fully convinced that we should be doing differently. We're quite satisfied by and large, with who we are and what we're doing and what we believe and what we think. And it's not so, brethren. You're not to be satisfied. You have a long, long ways to go to be the people that the Lord wants us to be and not much time. And what's going to happen is a lot of people are going to be separated because they did not choose to move ahead with the truth. They did not choose to put that into action in their life. They like to give lip service to things, they like to hear the things over and over, tell me the same old story over and over, and I'll be happy. But to actually do something was not to their liking. This is the story over and over, brethren. It can't be your story. Don't let it be your story. Be the person that God, that is allowing God to change them into this amazing um, uh, member of God's army that is taking shape right now, uh, in fact. Uh, let's have a word of prayer before we continue. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that we have this uh, privilege and opportunity to come before thee this Sabbath afternoon. We thank you for uh, the wonderful uh, privilege you have given each one of us to 
be part of this message, to know the things that we know. And we'll pray that you will put it in our heart now, uh, not to be satisfied with merely knowing, but that we will be uh, determined to do everything that you have asked us to do, to become uh, the amazing and wonderful uh, group of people that you will use to finish this work. We pray for uh, our brothers and sisters uh, scattered around uh, the world, the little groups, the individuals all alone, that you will be with them, that you will strengthen them, that you will encourage those who are all by themselves, uh, that they will know that you are with them, that they are not uh, alone, and that uh, those who have problems, those who have special needs, that you will uh, help them directly uh, in ways that only you can do. We also pray that you will uh, encourage us, uh, uh, your servants, to, um, to do for these people everything that we can do, that we know to do and are able to. We pray that um, you'll be with those who are sick in a special way, those who are in the hospital, uh, that you will watch over them, uh, that you will uh, give wisdom and understanding to their uh, physicians and that you will uh, touch them with your healing power if it is your will. We pray that uh, the things that we hear today will be a blessing to us and that we will uh, be determined uh, more than ever to be the people you have called us to be. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, our text is from Joel 2, 7 and 8. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march each one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks, neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. And Brother Haddis comments, nothing shall be able to hold down the people of God. Everyone shall perfectly attend to his business. They shall gather the fruits of the earth and nothing shall hurt them. This army will act in perfect unity and each will tend well to his own given part of the work. Moreover, none will suffer harm. And this is the 144,000 sealed uh, and vulnerable servants of God who are going to finish this work. Now, we are not sealed and we are not invulnerable or invincible, but we are moving in this direction. We are to be strong. We are to uh, develop uh, the wisdom that God has for us. We are to learn to act in the way that uh, we will be acting uh, efficiently, effectively in bringing in the fruits of the earth, those all the great harvests of, of, of people that is to be brought in. We are to learn these things now. There is a thought that we don't have to worry about this right now. This is not our business right now to fit ourselves for this. And for all those who think that, they will never fit themselves to be part of this uh, army. We are in the training phase. We are in the qualification phase. If we don't qualify now, we won't be part of the army later. And that's something that we need to think about, we really need to think about. You don't get a pass. You don't get to mess up now. And the Lord says, uh, enter ye, uh, uh, into the kingdom anyway, in spite of all your defects and, and problems and, and willful failures to advance with the truth. Not going to happen. We have to qualify ourselves now. We have been given every help, every instruction in the spirit of prophecy and message that we need to know. There's no excuse for us who have the final message for us to be dilly-dallying on the way. We have the final truth 
that is to develop us into this gospel army, into these amazing individuals. If we are not moving strongly in that direction, it's not God's fault. He gave us the message. It's our fault for not actually putting it into everyday effect. It's very hard for people to change. Even with the help of the Lord, even with the message, it's hard for people to change. People tend to do the same thing today and tomorrow that they did yesterday. That's just how people are. And you have to understand that, and you have to understand that it would take a great, amazing effort on your part, a, 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 a earth-shaking effort on your part to change and to become the people that God has asked you to be. And say, God will do it, brother. He will do it. He will add his part to your, um, your, uh, to the total effort that you make. When you have thrown every nerve and sinew into the effort, into the battle, he will make the difference. But he will only make the difference if you are going all out, Amen. if you are striving with every uh, muscle and nerve to do the things that he has told you to do. This is the only way we qualify, we will uh, be uh, qualified to be part of this amazing people. This army will act in perfect unity. Now, if you see people acting in perfect unity and harmony, you see people who are qualifying themselves to be part of the army. But anytime you see people working at cross purposes, uh, working independently, uh, not willing to be part of the body, and actually thrusting each other, th those people are not in any way or fashion uh, qualifying themselves to be part of the army. It, it is impossible for the people to thrust each other, to have problems with each other. And, and you, some people might say, I don't have problems with him, he has a problem with me. You have a problem. If Davidians have problems, it really is not um, going to come down to one person. In almost every case, it's gonna be both. Both are thrusting each other in one way or another. Both have come short of being the people that they are supposed to be. It's very common, brethren. As a people, we are far from being the united um, uh, uh, army working in perfect harmony together that we are called to be. We all have our own ideas. We all have our own theories. We all have our own life. We're not part of an army. We're not part of one cohesive group. We have individual goals in our life. It's a big mistake. All those individual goals that we have in our life, I want this, I want that, I'm working for the, uh, such and such a thing, and then I'm going to be a worker for the Lord. All of those things, brethren, are false goals. They're all deceptive. They're not part of the message. The message is, Get yourself ready, be ready for active service. But we set other things ahead of that, and so uh, very large numbers of Davidians are not at all interested or ready for active service. And it's not uh, because of the way things work, or the way the judgment comes suddenly, our personal day of judgment um, uh, too, uh, many people who think they have time to come into line will not have time to come into line. If, if the truth has not reached us and changed us today, there's no guarantee at all that it's going to do so tomorrow. In fact, there's every reason to believe that we will be as indifferent tomorrow to the things that we are supposed to do as we are today. <coughs> There is literally no place in God's army for the fearful, the weak, the lazy, or those who have trouble with their fellow brethren. Now, this is not to say that those people who have all these problems, we want to just chuck you out. We want you to chuck out the problems. 
We want you to let go of the problems. It's self in the end. All these problems come from self problems. Uh, uh, too much uh, interest in ourselves, our own ideas, our own having our own way, and so on. And we want you to change. But at the end of the day, there is no place for these people in God's army. None at all. When God selected the army by which Gideon was de to defeat the Midianites, he commanded Gideon to separate those who were fearful and afraid and those who had plenty of time before starting to do something from those who for haste would not even stop long enough to take a drink, but who scooping the water in their palms, uh, their palms drank as they ran through it. Judges 7, 2 to 7. If God's people do not wake now, they, will, they, they never will, for the time is too short and the work is too great, and the best of us cannot be too skillful or too active to engage in the conflict which is confronting us. If we don't wake up now, if we don't change direction in our life, if we don't line up with God's requirements now, there's a very good chance we never will. But some people will want to tag along with the army. And those are the people who will cross out of their ways, uh, cause stumbling, cause thrusting, cause problems. They cause problems. And they, they, uh, their presence is unfortunate. They, they can't keep pace with the march. Brethren, you need to uh, be the... Uh, uh, the uh, part of Gideon's band who can keep pace, who can move forward. Uh, don't hold up things. Don't be the one who causes the things to slow, uh, be uh, uh, scattered. Uh, 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 um, people to cross over out of their ways. People to have to stumble because of you. Uh, it is a serious, serious thing to uh, hold up God's army. As Davidians, we should be daily growing in strength and wisdom. And before we go on, um, I want to ask you, uh, have, you um, have you looked in the mirror and seen a strong Davidian? A stronger Davidian, have you? If you haven't, if you're still wondering th or not even thinking about it, it, we are called to be strong. And when you see yourself in the mirror, you may not think of yourself as strong, but in the Lord you must be strong. You are required to be strong. And you must have that strength every day, increasing. So it, it is necessary for us to see ourselves as strong and the other thing now is we need to be increasing in wisdom and understanding. The message is uh, a message that tells us many things. We have to have great understanding of the message, but we have to have wisdom as well, how to apply these things in our daily life, in our daily activities. Wisdom is something that we have to be using, not just knowing. We must develop great self-discipline. To be the people God is calling us to be means that we are able to control our thoughts and emotions and maintain our composure even when under trying circumstances. Uh, nobody is going to remark on your um, uh, mental self-discipline if you are calm under no provocation you're all by yourself and you have no reason not to be calm, but it is in the heat of the battle, in the most difficult times, that you must be uh, calm and stable, uh, composed Christians. This is the requirement to be part of this army. And you can see uh, how, how uh, ineffective it would be if Gideon's army was filled with nervous, flighty people who uh, as soon as something happened, throw up their hands, run around, scream, carry on. That's not the people that you would imagine to be in Gideon's army, and you're right. They're not. Anyone who behaves like that is not 
a Davidian indeed. And, and I want to put it to you very strongly because we need to move forward. If you want to be a Davidian, start earning the right to be uh, called a, a Davidian by behaving like a Davidian. To be God's special people, we must be particular and faithful in everything. There is a, a um, there are a lot of people in the world who do um, uh, superficial work. They don't do careful work. And then there's a set of people who like to tell themselves they do careful work, but they don't. And it doesn't matter what it is, everything all of our life, whatever it is. The, the truth is that a Davidian is careful and diligent in everything. And it doesn't come from wanting to do this, it comes from training ourselves to do it. You have to, you do have to want to do this and you have to start the training and your life is your training. Every part of your life is training for this. Every part of your life has to be done carefully, to standard. It is, uh, you don't leave one undone thing and say, I'll get it later, or a small thing is okay, because you'll mess up on the big things. You don't have to be obsessive, that's a, a weakness and a deficiency in itself, but you do the things to standard. You have a standard, you have a defined way of doing things correctly, and you do it. Everything in its place, everything just so in your life. Now, what is our religion? Uh, there's, there is an older way of thinking about religion that's embodied in this question in answer 5, page 21. Does religion consist only of studying and praying and fasting and weeping and preaching? and comforting and repenting and forgiving, begging and giving? How can one become religious and what difference will it make in one's life? Are these, this is what consists of religion? Uh, studying and praying and fasting and weeping and preaching and comforting and repenting and forgiving and begging and giving? Um, some, part, some of these things are part of religion, but this is not, the essence of religion. This is the essence of, um, of formal uh, worldly uh, religious uh, ideas. And it has come into our minds too, to where we think, yeah, that's, that's a good summary of religion, but it's not. Brother Hadif says, thus we see that true religion does not, does indeed consist of something more than merely praying, fasting, giving, and preaching, and that it most certainly does not include begging. Uh, I'm going to divert for a moment. There are some, mostly sisters, uh, in the field, I trust none here, who have encouraged people to beg. Uh, this is a serious error on their part. They don't realize it. They think they're, they're doing good. But what they did is clutter up the general discussion with a lot of scammer, beggar people. Because if word got out, this is a live place here. They, they, you can make money here. Good place. The word got around. And they passed those telephone numbers around and people, uh, 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 um, zoomed in on general discussion. Now you sisters who have done this have, have, have uh, committed a serious error. When you uh, in, help uh, someone in the, in the false activity of begging, you uh, become part of the sin. You say, I just gave him some money, that's all. You are part of the sin. Your, your guilt is serious. Your guilt is as serious as theirs. You say, uh, it's like the Pharisees who were caught the woman in adultery, but were involved in it too. It's like, she's a sinner. Yes, she was a sinner, but so were they. Both sides were in sin. 
and you, you sisters, and I'm saying this on purpose because I believe it is almost entirely sisters, you have made a grave error and you've caused problems there for people on general discussion because of these, uh, these pernicious uh, scammers and beggars. And you do need to feel uh, uh, shame and guilt for what you have done. You, were, you ran when you were not sent and you ran in a direction you should not have gone. And you encouraged activity that was wrong. And you're part of it, deeply part of it. And some of you won't recognize it and continue to this moment with that activity. It is not, you cannot say I'm doing good and, and wipe your uh, lips as it were and not be concerned. No brethren, you can't do that. You are not doing good when you are doing on your own thing. And it, uh, begging, uh, help, uh, encouraging people in this is not the right thing. No young men should be given money. And lots of you sisters are giving money to young working age men. It is a big mistake and there's no justification for it. And some of you may say, uh, we're helping them go to school, for what? Why are they going to school? They're going to school for their own purposes, not for God's purposes. They're not even going to be able to use their education by and large, even if they were to succeed. What are they going to do with their education in a few years? Teach math? Math? Uh, uh, we posted a um, little um, uh, snippet there the, uh, uh, a week or two ago the math tutor, the AI tutor, was able to increase uh, the children's scores very significantly at a low price, much lower the price than a teacher. And that's early, early uh, days in Ghana. This is where the test was in Ghana. The AI is going to do everything better and cheaper than what people do. And you don't actually believe that, you don't actually feel it right now, but for those who have ears to listen, hear the truth. It is going to happen, and in five years or so, uh, people will, uh, the majority of newer uh, people in the job market, professionals and so on, will not be in the job market. Very large numbers of people will be unemployed on all levels. Anyway, uh, uh, this is what will happen to all those who are fitting themselves to serve the world. Uh, want to get an education, want to get ahead, there's only one way now to do that. That is with the Lord. If you want to get ahead with the world, you're going to end up with the world. And it's not a good place where they end up. Uh, they end up in universal unemployment and non-employment in the world. I think a lot of people are starting to get the feel of this, but, uh, but uh, it is new technology. A new thing has come to this world. The enemy has found a way to um, abuse uh, people. He has found a way to uh, try to circumvent God's command. By the sweat of thy brow, thy brow you shall earn your bread. And he has found a way to change that. Uh, I, I want to divert one more uh, point here. Um, I think it was just this last week or the week before. No, it was this last week. Um, the robotics company Figure, that's the name of them, Figure. You will, you will know the name. You will hear the name sometime. Uh, has joined forces with OpenAI. And you know that name, I'm sure. And they... Uh, in just a few weeks, OpenAI gave their robots a brain transplant, literally. The most amazing thing to see how fast that thing happened. Uh, the robots are capable of anything that they're programmed to do, anything. Uh, the problem with the robots is they're, they're just dumb, totally dumb. They have no intelligence at all. And if you want them to pick up a piece of paper, you have to program them to pick up the piece of paper. If you want them to um, walk over here, you have to write a program. It's a very uh, impossible way of having robots. 
You can't write a program for all the things human beings do. It is too much. But what um, artificial intelligence has done in just a few weeks, two, three weeks, they gave them a general intelligence of a, uh, basically almost of a person, and so they can say, what am I holding in my hand? And the robot says, an apple, or whatever it was. Uh, they can understand what they see. It is the most, and it can answer too, it can speak now. All of this in just a few weeks, uh, because uh, OpenAI transferred this uh, technology to the company called Figure. And their robots now uh, have this uh, very early uh, uh, um, um, uh, glimmering of intelligence and ability. What this means is that the robots are coming for your jobs. It really means that. You will see them everywhere in a few years. Most amazing thing to see before your eyes happen all of a sudden. Anyway, um, if you think you're going to um, um, train yourself, educate yourself, so I could get a good position in the world, you're mistaken. You're going to go through four years of college and end up with no job, no future. And it's not just that your education is, is useless, it is the AI can do your work better. It can do it better than what you do. They, there's no need for you. And another thing that has happened and is starting to worry computer programmers, software engineers, um, the newest AI programming assistants, basically you can think of them as like uh, an AI that programs uh, for you, writes a computer program. And the newest ones are very, very good, very good. Surprisingly good. The programmers who are using it can't get over how fast and how powerful these, this, the new one is. And it will only continue like that, better and better. What you have is AI writing computer programs. Think about that. You have computers writing computer programs, but not just anything. They're writing good computer programs and they're writing fast because they can write at the speed of a computer compared to a human being. One person said, in one night I did the work of a team for two weeks. It would have taken a team of programmers two weeks to do what I did in one night. Well, he might have been exaggerating, who knows, but the fact is uh, tremendous things are about to happen. Programmers are getting nervous, by the way. Okay. Uh, you don't need so many programmers. A few top-notch programmers can do the work, and they will do the work, and companies are not going to pay 100 people to do the work 10 people can do. And uh, very large changes are coming, and um, everyone's nervous. The AI people are nervous because they don't want software engineers of all people turning against them. But they're about to turn against them as they lose their job. So you see something just developing right now, a whole new future taking shape in front of you. It's, it is surprising and it's unexpected and, um, and it's hard to believe, uh, but it's all true, brethren, and those people who, who do want to fit themselves to serve the world will end up paying the price. And you sisters who are helping people go to college to uh, serve themselves in the world and so on, you're not doing good, you're doing wrong, and it is a serious uh, 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 thing on your part. Uh, uh, let us continue past begging. The members of the kingdom church are, according to Isaiah, to be skilled in their respective trades and professions. As builders, engineers, carpenters, masons, mechanics, or whatever, they are to build all wastes raise up the former desolations and repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations, Isaiah 61, 4. They are also to be animal husbandmen, vine growers, expert agriculturists, 
and as such, they are to be skilled in the science of management. This is what we are called to do in the end, to be skilled in the science of management. It is our job to be managers, uh, to be directors. It is also our job to be skilled in individual trades, uh, professions. Now, these are things that we need to already know. These are things that we need to be able to increase in knowledge in the next couple of years. And we're not doing this in order to go and get a job in the world. We're doing this to be able to do our work in the kingdom. There's a difference. We are fitting ourselves to serve the Lord. Those people, especially young people, who are fitting themselves to serve the world are going to reap a different harvest. But for us, it is necessary, very, very necessary, that we all have a skill, a profession, every one. And, and you say, oh, I don't have a particular skill or profession. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. It is necessary that you do. Every single Davidian needs to have a profession. Learn to be a skilled agriculturist. Why not? Learn to uh, uh, be a mason, a carpenter. These are things that you can learn and, and all the other things. You can learn and you can be a blessing instead of uh, uh, being nothing. The, the, um, the way of the Davidian is not an easy way. It's a strenuous uh, uh, path. It is a path of exertion, physical exertion, moral exertion, and mental exertion. It's not an easy way. There's much easier ways. Uh, uh, there are paths, uh, uh, churches that have a broad, easy path for people. The Davidian way is not the, the easy way. All in all, continuing with that same question and finishing it, all in all, we see that Bible religion, Christianity, is nothing more or less than turning from obeying the devil to obeying the Lord. That is what religion is. From consuming, sorry, from, from turning from, from a life of doing wrong to a life of doing right. That is what religion is all about. And if you think it's begging or, or preaching or this or that, some of those things might be part of uh, religion, but this is what religion is. Turning from a life of doing wrong to a life of doing right. From consuming to producing. There are people who consume and they don't produce. Not one Davidian can be in this uh, situation. We have to produce. There's many different ways that we can produce, but to be a Davidian is to be a producer to increase the sum good in the world. <clears throat> from consuming to producing, from borrowing to loaning, from begging to giving, from cheating to restoring, and to dealing honestly, from exacting to forgiving, and from being served to serving. This is what religion means. True religion is ever distinctly seen in our words and deportment in, in, and in every day, uh, sorry, every act of life. With the followers of Christ, religion should never be divorced from business. It is never divorced from our usual daily life, the usual business of life, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what we are doing, we need to do it carefully, skillfully diligently. An indolent man cannot serve God. And he won't serve God faithfully. And he won't be, his service won't be accepted, brethren. This is something that we need to take to heart. It is uh, the, uh, uh, the truth that the Lord has given us. An indolent man cannot serve God, for he gives to others an example entirely contrary to the principles of Christ. No idler can be a practical Christian. Christ is our example, and he worked at the carpenter's trade uh, with, uh, with his father, Joseph. Now, uh, a tradesman like that is a diligent person. 
They learned to be careful and particular. His work was exact. Uh, his care of, of everything was precise. The, the workshop was not scattered. There was not all kinds of chaos there. Everything was uh, put away, kept in good order, kept ready to serve. Rise in the morning, even while the stars are shining, if need be. Lay your plans to do something and then accomplish it. The secret of success. When, sorry, what you need, my brother, is active exercise. It's not enough to sit down and believe and pray and beg. That's not enough. It's not our religion. Every feature of your continence, every faculty of your mind is indicative of this. You do not love hard work nor to earn your bread by the sweat of your brow. Now there are people who naturally don't like hard work, diligent work, continuous work. And Satan is working now to bring in a whole new system where he can uh, deceive vast multitudes of people through uh, taking away their work. It will be a wonderful opportunity for uh, wickedness, for sin, beyond what you imagine. Because work is a blessing that God has given us, and we are to be diligent and careful workers. It's part of our religion. Careful, diligent, honest work is our religion. But this is God's ordained plan in the economy of life. You fail to carry through what you undertake. You have not disciplined yourself to regularity. System is everything. Do but one thing at a time and do that well, finishing it before you begin a second piece of work. It's a complete summary of success there, isn't it? What you need to know, what we all need to know, how we need to behave. This is the a way we need to live our life. Indolent, careless habits indulged in secular work will be brought into the religious life and will unfit one to do any efficient service for God. Many who through diligent labor might have been a blessing to the world have been ruined through idleness. Lack of employment and of steadfast purpose opens the door to a thousand temptations. Evil companions and vicious habits deprave mind and soul and the result is ruin for this life and for the life to come. And that's the sad part. That's the really important part. And, and the enemy has carefully read this and said, yes, this is an excellent plan. Let's get some, uh, let's take away the employment of mass a number of people and we will uh, cause them to develop vicious habits that deprive, deprive mind and soul and that ruin them for this life and the life to come. And the enemy is moving straight into this, brethren, very fast. The word of God declares that if a man will not work, neither shall he eat. To, uh, 2 Thessalonians 3.10. The Lord does not require the hardworking man to support others in idleness. In fact, it is a sin to do this, sisters. It is a sin to support uh, young, able-bodied men uh, uh, who could be working, but you, you support them in idleness, in claimed education or this or that, whatever. It is not so, brethren. We're not Davidian. We do not, we do, not do that. With many, there is, a, there is a waste of time, a lack of effort, which brings to poverty and want. If these faults are not corrected by those who indulge them, all that might be done in their behalf would be like putting treasure into a bag with holes. And you have done this. Some of you sisters have done this, and maybe brothers too, I don't know. Uh, you have put your treasure into a bag with holes, and it is wasted. It was wasted, all of it. You think, well, I did some good. No, you didn't. You caused a person to behave dishonestly, unmanly, undividian, in an undividian way. You caused problems there, and you caused the, your treasure to go through 
a bag with holes and causing you to be a bad steward. And the Lord will hold you accountable for that. No place anymore in the vanguard for the fearful, the neurotic, or troublemakers who thrust their fellows. When God selected the army by which Gideon was to def defeat the, uh, oh, we read this. Okay, um, the point here though is, we have come to a time and place where God is requiring us to act as Davidians, act as Davidians indeed. All the time for talk is past, all the time for pretense is past. He has called us to be the real people for this time. He has called us to be uh, 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 after the, uh, the behavior of, the, uh, of, of Gideon's band, people who are determined to move forward and not be weak and fearful and hesitating. Diseased minds have a diseased, sickly experience, while a healthy, pure, sound mind with the intellectual faculties unclouded will have a sound experience, which will be of inestimable worth. The happiness attending a life of well-doing will be a daily reward and will, it, will of itself be health and joy. This is a great secret that we don't want to be a secret. The way to be strong and healthy is to do good. Do good for others. You have problems. You're all uh, 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 twisted and gnarled inside with all your problems. Go out and do for other people. Help other people. Be a blessing to other people. And you will get health and strength. You will be, uh, your life will be uh, 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 change, improve. Uh, it, it will be of inestimable worth to you if you do this. And you will, uh, you will gain happiness in doing these things. So, uh, on track with the vanguard to be strong, uh, balanced, uh, to be developing wisdom, uh, off track, off the track, cannot march with the vanguard because we have allowed ourselves to uh, succumb to the enemy's wiles, his temptations, his diversions. These things are not from God. These are things that are from the enemy. If you want to uh, dilly-dally with the enemy and, and uh, partake of all these negative uh, uh, things, then they will be part of you. Uh, the, the solution is to strictly uh, eschew these things, strictly stay away from them. If you see this, you move back toward the center. If you see this over here, sadness, jealousy, whatever in your mind, you move back toward the center. Do not allow yourself to drift into one of these directions. And that is where self-discipline comes in. That's where strength comes in. And with the help of the Lord, you can do this. You can be this straight, on-track Davidian. That is from uh, ChatGPT, that Davidian, by the way. And, and you will notice that uh, ChatGPT drew that picture with a health tracker on the, on the Davidian's hand, wrist. Okay, that's because ChatGPT was told that Davidians don't wear watches, but they wear health trackers, which they pay attention to, by the way. It's a form of hypocrisy, brethren, a, a serious form of hypocrisy to wear that and not to check it during the day. Don't do that. I didn't give the ChatGPT instructions on what to draw, except draw a strong, calm Davidian. <laughs> okay. Uh, Divi Christians with mental problems have a tendency to fail to live up to the standards of the message. We are not to have these problems. To the extent that God is able to heal us and we are able to be strong 
and of good courage, we need to move ahead in that way. And to think that we are subject to, a, to the full measure of all the ills of the world is a mistake. We're not subject to the disease and the failings of the heathen around us in, 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 uh, completely. There is going to be offenses come. There are going to be problems. There are going to be things that we can't fully um, um, uh, erase right now. But with the help of the Lord, we can go through these problems far, far better than if we didn't have the help of the Lord. And if we're not going through these things better, then we're not, we don't have the help of the Lord. There are needed for this time well-balanced uh, minds, healthy, wholesome Christians. We need it, brethren. That's the way we're moving forward. You can't expect to do the full service uh, to the Lord if, you, uh, if your mind, which is the, the, which is the, um, the, the, the gateway of communication between you and the Lord, uh, you cannot ha expect to do your part well if you have a, um, a troubled, unreliable mind, if, you're, if you have problems. We have to be strong and healthy. <clears throat> Many of those who profess Christ have a sickly experience. They cannot bear anything unfavorable. They're weak. They did not care to develop strength, mental strength, self-discipline. They did not, they're not uh, moment by moment holding themselves in the narrow path mentally. They're not uh, 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 staying away from the gloomy thoughts, the worried thoughts, the weak things, the temptations. Hold yourself uh, directly in the middle there. And as you learn to do that, it becomes very powerful. They lose heart if they think they are in any way slighted or hurt if their brethren have not been as tender with them as they think they should be. The great physician would, by his infinite skill, restore them to sound moral health, but the patient refuses to take the prescription he offers. Now, part of the problem is a very interesting problem you would not guess, but people hold on to who they are. Whoever you are, it's precious to you, good or bad. It's the way I am, brother. That's just the way I am, and I'm not changing. You may not say that last part, but that's the true part. And people hold on to who they are. They hold on to their problems. They can't imagine themselves without their problems. And because they won't let go of their problems, they, they continue on with them. <clears throat> The great physician would, by his infinite skill, restore them to sound moral health, but the patient refuses to take the prescription he offers. They refuse to let go. These persons may apply the word of God to their case for a short time, but they do not become doers of the word. They soon come under, the, under influences which suit their natural taste and counteract all they have gained. If your natural tastes are weak, uh, uh, they, are, they are troubled, they are emotionally um, unstable and, and so on, well, you're going to come back under your natural uh, tastes. You're going to go back to your usual ways. And they do not become genuine doers of the word. It is a major problem. It's not, a prob it is not wrong to have mental issues. It's wrong to hold on to the mental issues. It's wrong not to do something about it. If you don't go, if you refuse year after year to do what you uh, do anything positive for yourself, then you are holding on to those things. You are refusing to move ahead in a, in a healthy way. Now, a word to the retired brethren. You are under greater obligation to do more in every way than those who are younger. We don't believe in retirement as Davidians. Uh, when we say retired brethren, we mean retired in the worldly sense, but we don't actually believe in retirement. Now many, maybe al almost everyone believes in retirement. It's like 
I'm, I'm of age, I get to retire, I, I worked hard. You get to retire from your job, perhaps, but you can't retire as a Davidian. You really want to retire as a Davidian? Of course not. You can't retire from serving God. It is necessary for you to see this. You don't get to live an indolent life of self-indulgence. Well, I'm retired, you know. So, that's, that's excellent. You have more time to do more for the Lord than if you were not retired. That's how you need to see it. You are not retired from serving the Lord. That is the bottom line. Your life is not to be a life of ease and indolence. Your life is to be a life of service, of growth. Now, you are obeying the Lord when you are growing spiritually, when you are helping other people uh, spiritually and materially. There's much you can do. There are things that everyone can do. You, we're not eight-hour workers. Uh, we're all um, all-day workers. We serve the Lord all day. Uh, one of the things that uh, the older, uh, more feeble retired uh, brethren have a duty for is to take care of their health. You don't feel like exercising, sister. You don't feel like walking. The Spirit of Prophecy says walk. You don't feel like doing your exercises, you do your exercises. It's a religious duty. You don't feel like taking your medicine, it's a religious duty, brethren. The medicine, as Brother Tim mentioned last night, it keeps you together, it keeps you healthy. It avoids the stroke, it avoids the problems that you will have. You say, well, drugs, drugs. These are not poisonous drugs today. These are moderately beneficial drugs. Not fully beneficial, but moderately. On the sum, on the whole, um, they have more benefit than not. Did these drugs exist in Brother Hadith's time? No. None of them existed in Brother Hadith's time. Did they exist in Sister White's time? Of course not. They have poisonous substances that they use for drugs. We don't use those things today. They're not approved. It would be illegal to prescribe those things. You brethren who think, you retired brethren, you senior brethren who think that you don't have to do, take care of yourself in the way that is, is uh, best, you are making a serious, serious religious mistake. You are not serving the Lord, you are not fulfilling your religious duties as a Davidian. So those, that's the situation for those who are uh, the oldest and most feeble. But if we are able to do things, if we're able to speak, if we're able to encourage, we have work to do. We should be, uh, as the senior people who have been in the message the longest, the Lord is holding us to a higher standard. We don't hold ourselves to a, a higher standard many times. Many times, brethren, I see all sorts of things. But the Lord holds us to a high standard. And as senior brethren, we should be doing the Lord's work in many, many different ways, uh, constantly. Our whole life should be a, a life of service, uplifting the Lord uh, with all those that we see, uplifting people. This is the work that we are to do. And uh, for those who are even more able-bodied, <coughs> there's no such thing as being retired. Davidians don't believe in retirement. We believe in uh, earning our bread by the sweat of our brow at any age. And if you think you can just relax, don't do anything, you're thinking like the world. You're just, uh, you, you have bought into the lies and deception of Satan. It is not our way. Our way is an active way, uh, striving to constantly serve the Lord in many different ways. So. Uh, I want this to be a word to everyone, all through the field. It doesn't matter what you, who you are, where you are, if you can eat, Sister White says, you can work. It's a good thought, and the work you do might be work for yourself, it might be, work for, it might be uh, spiritually encouraging work for other people, it might be actual work. And that's fine, that's good. Do the very most you can do because 
it is good for you, you will be blessed, and you will know that you are, you are having an uh, active part in, in doing the things that the Lord has asked us to do at this time. This is our closing thought. As Davidians, we should be daily growing in strength and wisdom. We must be able to ask ourselves daily these questions. How did I increase in wisdom and strength today? We really mean this, brethren. We, uh, uh, I didn't ask you directly uh, the mirror question, but when you looked in the mirror, did you see a wise person today? You did need to see a wise person who the Lord is making wise, who is learning and growing in understanding every day. Now, you don't see that to lift yourself up. You don't see, oh, I'm so smart. I'm so wise. You don't do that. But you do it when you do look in the mirror and you do see a wise person, you, see, you have a thankful heart. You thank the Lord. You have gratitude in your heart that the Lord is helping you to become more and more uh, like him every day. So uh, just as you need to be growing in strength, you need to be a strong person. There are no weak Davidians. You need to be a wise person. Now the wise, uh, it means a lot to be wise, and it's not just spiritual, it's everything. All of our life, all uh, temporal things, business things, uh, everything. You cannot be wise if you're deceived. People daily show themselves to be deceived about some tr trifling thing or another. Uh, YouTube videos and, and deceptions from the enemy that they pass around. If you're going to be wise, you're not going to be deceived by these things. You're not going to be deceived by people begging you for money wrongly, uh, able-bodied men. Uh, you cannot be wise when you are deceived. So uh, don't look yourself in the mirror and imagine that you are wise when you're not. That would be very foolish. But develop true wisdom from the, from the Lord. The message contains ultimate wisdom and understanding. Study, uh, you, we have studied now, do put these things into practice. And uh, by all means, continue to grow stronger every day. What did I do today to develop greater self-discipline? It's a question that you need to ask yourself and answer. Now, self-discipline is uh, kind of like um, uh, mental work, mental lifting weights, uh, mental effort, and we don't uh, naturally, uh, ever, uh, it's not to our liking necessarily. Uh, we'd rather sit down and relax and so on. But uh, for us Davidians, uh, it is uh, necessary for us to grow in self-discipline every day. Have I controlled my thoughts and emotions in every case? You thought that it was just going to be a miracle, but it's not. There'll be no miracles for people who don't learn to control themselves now. What we have to do is stay in the pathway, stay in the permissible guidelines. Uh, if your mind drifts over to one way, notice that and see yourself coming back into the calm, uh, central, uh, stable, balanced way of thinking. You can do this. It's actually uh, uh, very doable once you start to practice it. Uh, people here at Bayshin have been exposed to this training somewhat. We're going to be doing this more and more. But you can train yourself to shy away from the thoughts that you don't want. You don't have to be sucked into these things. You don't have to fall for the deception of anger or fear, or, or uh, worry, or whatever it is. <clears throat> have, I, have I been calm and composed even under difficult circumstances? The Davidians don't get flustered, throw up their hands, walk away, get angry. They're calm and composed. They're, that's one of the big reasons their men and women wondered at. It's like, Wow, they just keep going calmly, doing their, their work in the midst of all the craziness that is going on. 
Those Davidians are amazing. Have I been diligent and faithful in everything, in the little things and the big things? It is critical to being a Davidian that we are faithful with everything, brethren. We are not called to leave things undone, do things halfway, uh, uh, just um, a slipshod work and so on. This is a very large thing. Once you do this, once you master this, it will come back to your own benefit. We're not doing this for our own benefit, but it will benefit you. Your worldly employers will um, be eager to have you as a worker because you are so trustworthy, dependable, reliable. You're the person who they can set to work and do a good job without them having to watch you. Because you watch yourself. You know the Lord, you're doing the work you're doing as unto the Lord. This is not a small thing. All of these things are part of being a Davidian indeed today. Uh, we're getting close to the kingdom. It's not so far. The end of the world is coming up. And it's, it's, we talk about it and talk about it, and it might be a little hard to believe, but brethren, it is coming. In one way or another, it's coming. Uh, the enemy has his plans for the end of the world too. And uh, you'll be surprised at the wickedness that he would like to bring in to end the world. But God uh, has his plans and we play a critical part in it. If we do our part, if we're faithful, if we will allow him to make us over in his image, to be genuine, true Davidians indeed, we will win. We, we will win this battle. We will uh, see the things come about. But I tell you, this is a true thing. If you don't allow the Lord to change you, to become a Davidian indeed, you won't see the kingdom. It's a true thing. For one reason or another, it won't, you won't see it. So it is not a done deal. It's not a certain thing for each, each one of us. We have to go all out at this point for the Lord. Go all out and becoming a Davidian indeed today. Thank you, brethren. God bless you.